Welcome back, everyone, to Chucky's Talk Show, the great all-American pizza podcast. So on today's newest video, it is another interview. We are here with Emmanuel Wilson. We're going to be sitting down with his production film, uh, Little Birds Production, how it got all started, some of the different films he created, and of course, what does the future hold? Sit back and relax as we interview him. But now, before we can get into all that, let's roll the talk show intro. Welcome back, everyone, to Chucky's Talk Show. I hope you all are doing well. Hope you are doing great. And I hope you guys are ready for another exciting interview. So on today's newest interview, uh, just a little recap here, too. This was actually on the old channel before it got deleted. We are interviewing my cousin all the way from Texas, Emmanuel Wilson. Some of you guys may have remember seeing the old interview. Some of you guys may not have seen the old interview. Uh, so just a little recap. He has a filming production youtube channel called a little brother's production he has made a bunch of films with a bunch of his colleagues buddies and uh and days prior before the interview i was trying to watch each and every one of them but i couldn't follow with the recent one um but not only that we're going to be talking about his productions and all we're going to be talking about what does the future hold and other projects as well and i know that his brother is in the group and they have once used their music uh, I believe in one of their films and one of their actors was in one of their music videos, which of course Emmanuel did an acting role as well. So that's a lot of exciting stuff. So I hope you guys are ready. So let's welcome to the screen Emmanuel Wilson. All right. How how's everyone doing? <laughs> well, welcome to the show, man. How you feeling? Feeling good, uh, you know what I'm saying? Just uh it's a little cloudy out here, so yeah. you know, a little rainy weather, just you know, trying to trying to get through it. But you know, other than that, feeling blessed, man. Thankful, thankful for another day. So mm -hmm. exactly, exactly, indeed. I know the next couple of days here we're gonna have some rain, showers coming down here south. So that's really a good thing too, right? For that cold front hits and uh, you know, be kind of terrifying for some of us. Mm, the cold yeah i mean it's that winter time man so right you know gotta get your uh hot cocoa ready and all that jazz <laughs> yeah. so as i was uh, saying i know we did this interview beforehand and a lot of things has changed from the past to now so uh right off the bat what about you explain to everybody uh like where you're originally from yeah man i'm from new orleans louisiana um born there um moved after hurricane katrina uh, got family out there still so you know we still visit out there and you know see what's up over there eat good food because you know Louisiana has some fine dining fine cuisine fine dishes so that's always you know always fun to do uh, as well as seeing family of course mm -hmm. um, but you know went to school out here Fort Worth Texas you know high school college you know all that's jazz yeah I went to University of North Texas graduated last year I'm not sure if I was I probably I don't know if I was on the last time I was on your show if I was graduated or still in school, um. I can't remember when we did it. Was it last year? It was, it was right around when we did. Oh, I think I was I was about to graduate because it was yeah. Uh, during the time we did, I was talking about Elixir, the yeah. last kind of ALB release movie we did. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, so you know a lot has changed since then. <laughs> right. Um. I released Butterflies a few months after that interview in the uh the fall of 2022. Mm -hmm. And then now, you know, a year later, almost a little year a year later and some change, released uh, the Nocturnal Voyage, which is uh, our the latest movie for uh we go it's a little brother productions, but also ALB Productions is kind of like the new kind of like name is going by. Not really like it's still AL, it's still a lot of brother productions, but mm -hmm. it's called ALB productions. But mm -hmm. yeah, and I mean, but you know, if we get into that later. I just about yeah. me. Yeah, I just been, you know, went to UNC, UNC studied film and television, um, graduated with a degree in that. So, you know, making short films is, you know, fun, fun stuff, a hobby right. trying to make into a career, right? So mm -hmm. um you know, got a team uh, assembled a team in college, some really great colleagues and great friends so you know thankful and blessed to have them as colleagues and friends because you know sometimes those are hard 
to to find in people so Indeed. you know yeah, yeah. exactly i i totally agree and uh you know speaking of which with alb as well uh, we're gonna call it here um i i know for a while like ever since you know we were growing up you were into the whole films and and uh, i remember we was going to the house a lot uh often sometime and i still remember this one i I don't remember if it's still on YouTube. I it's, I know it's somewhere out there. That if I correct me if I'm wrong, I think the first ever film you did made or created for fun because it was a snowy day in Texas. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like February ish or so. Um. Oh yeah, because I think it was. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. I think it was because it was like school was we were school was closed down because icy roads and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um. Man, I think uh, I think it was February, February, March, around there, around those two months. Mm-hmm. And um, you, you and your brothers created the Star Wars film, the Star Wars film. Yeah, yeah. That, it was called a a, a, a light gone dark. Light, light gone, gone dark. dark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I still remember that day. Uh, me and my brother Chris, we was like going to your house, and I think it was like after it snowed, and we were there for something. And I know we had a watch party. Yeah, I think we had like yeah. a premiere type thing. You showed us that night or that day. I think you showed us first, and then yeah, I think that. yeah, we had some people over. Um, because my older brother Alex, you know, mm-hmm. directed it, had me play the main character. Um, I don't think they had names, so I was just Jedi or yeah. something like that. And Caleb, but, um, yeah. Caleb was my Padawan. And for mm-hmm. those who don't know Star Wars, Padawan is just like, you know, um, I guess the student to the um the teacher so i was this i was playing his teacher and he was my student and we were both uh jedi knights or you know mm-hmm. warriors whatever you want to call it and you know uh it's still on youtube leg on darth by alexander wilson is i think what is his youtube channel name um either that or raw wilson but if you look up alex wilson i think it should pop up and you'll see me holding like two lightsabers that's how you really know yeah um so there you go little little <laughs> throwback there that was me as like 10 or 11 years old and now i'm 23 so you know yeah yeah the years flew fly by man but Mm -hmm. um you know that was that was i mean that film got me into filmmaking because i I mean before then i would like write stories and kind of you know watch these movies like i was a huge star wars fan ninja turtles fan a lot of sci-fi stuff yeah and i don't think watching those movies i really thought of myself being able to do it not saying that i had doubt that i could do it just saying i just didn't think of myself in that position of like writing and directing you know i'm looking at these movies like they're their own thing and you know i'm I'm playing with the toys you know i thought writing was probably as close as to like being i guess you know a creative or used as a creative outlet but um watching or being in this film this short film and obviously it was like a home movie yeah, all my brothers are the cast, like you know, Alphonse, Alex, Caleb, uh, Eliu, my you know, my three older brothers, my one younger. Um, we we just fill out the whole cast. So, mm-hmm. and, and but it was just the whole idea of like going outside filming. Like it was so hard for me in those scenes to not contain my grin because like I feel like every take I remember I was like always smiling, having to fight back, smiling right. or laughing because I was so excited. And, you know, after that movie was finished, after kind of seeing him edit it a little bit, I was like, man, you know, movies, this this is something that could be done, you know, like this is possible, I guess. Yeah. So, you know, that movie, she, she, huge shout out to my older brother, Alex, and, you know, to God be glory with that. It was it was just like an outlet or at least a platform for me to like kind of see like, you know, movies are possible, you know, like being a filmmaker is possible. Like you can make home movies because after that I started making my own home movies. And the first one he edited, and then the second one I did on iMovie, and you know the rest was that. But you know, like on Dark, it's a, it's a huge kind of like, you know, what's the word? I guess you could say, um, stepping stone into filmmaking. But you know, uh, you know, it's on YouTube, so if you want to see a younger, younger Emmanuel Wilson, E Man, right? So right. <laughs> you can check it out. Yes, yeah, my indeed. older brother. So mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, indeed, exactly. Now let's uh, move on to how did. Well, we know how the love of the filmmaking started, uh, but how did a little person's production, or as you officially call it, ALB, how did that all started? Yeah, so ALB Productions, I mean, um, man, 
it kind of ties back into Light Gun Darth. So it wasn't like Light Gun Darth wasn't ALB production or Little Brother Productions. Uh, the next movie I did, um, you know, I had my cousin Sam kind of um, he was in town um, and, you know, we've been knowing each other since we were young. So mm -hmm. he came, he visited us some summers and um, we decided me, Sam and Caleb, my younger brother, Caleb, decided to make a short film or make a home movie. I guess you could call it. It's still a short film, but yeah. um, they're on DVD. So <laughs> they're on YouTube. Maybe, maybe they'll be, um, if I could, maybe if I find a way to make them into digital, I may make it like a special kind of release on like mm -hmm. some um, Patreon or something. I don't know. But <laughs> uh, we made this movie called A Cop and a Robber. And basically, Cousin Sam, he plays this, um, uh, he plays this, I guess you say robber. Really, he's just a guy who's running around with mm -hmm. Nerf guns, shooting Caleb's character, or trying to fight Caleb's character, who plays a cop, really, who just has a vest on and Nerf gun as well. Uh, you know, with the I think a costume Batman belt, you know, makeshift yeah. or whatever. So, um, yeah, man, we uh we filmed that I think the summer of twenty twelve or twenty eleven. Uh, I think I was going to either seventh or eighth grade. It was one of those summers, but um i used the same camera from my uh older brother alex that we use on like on darth it was just this 360p camera i think not the most best resolution but at that time i was thinking like this is like cinema cinema camera right here this is this is what the pros be using yeah um, oh, obviously not but you know in your mind when you're that age you're just like this this little device could capture you know me telling stories and obviously the story was just like you know uh caleb chasing sam around the whole my whole neighborhood and they go into the house you know the house my house um and uh just you know wrestle each other fight each other and then i come at the end like as this like um i don't know this surprise character who kind of like foils both their plans and knocks them both out and foils i guess oh, no. yeah foils both of their plans so you know i have a little cameo in that too but you know these movies i always at a young age i was like oh maybe i'll put them on youtube in the future but never got to and i think I don't even know if the original file, like the digital file, where it is. Um, I have to ask Alex because my older brother Alex, who directed like on Darth, um, edited that movie for me. So, you know, I mean, that movie may be somewhere digital he could find. I don't know. Maybe have lost it on DVD it forever. Right I mean, who knows? Uh, who knows, man? But I have it on uh, DVD, and you know, and that to go back into a little bit of productions, how that started. That movie, when he edited, it, he just called it um a little bro pro or something little bro production because uh he was editing it for me and i didn't really have a studio name and he he called his i think at the time like raw studios or raw productions or whatever but um yeah i think um he just gave me that name a little brother productions uh or a little bro pro or something a little bro productions or pro something like that mm -hmm. and at the time i'm young you know i'm his little brother so it makes sense why he gave that to it so I guess, you know, Alex kind of like helped launch me into this kind of like filmmaking, um, you know, career or whatever, uh, or, you know, fault, like looking into film because, you know, got me in like on Darth and then kind of gave that name a little brother production. Sorry, little bro pro. Yeah. Uh, and kind of stuck with it, man. Uh, after that, because then I made another movie the following summer, which I edited and filmed. Uh, with the same camera and use that same name or maybe the same variation of it uh and it was a little it was more just caleb and me in it uh my uh at the time i don't think my cousin sam was it was during the fall so I, it was too late for the summer hmm. and you know it follows caleb being a uh it's a it's this kind of sci-fi movie it's about this pilot who crash lands on earth and he's confused with this planet because he's never heard of earth before so he's seeing cars he's seeing things before but there's a twist earth has like a bunch of like clones that i play like these cyborg clones and when we find this kind of like this crash lander we try to take them out what but caleb fights these clones off and it's really just me playing my like because i didn't have no one else so i was just like pretend to be a, like one clone and another clone so there's a lot of like you know using tripod uh you know <laughs> just shot different coverages and us right like you know him fighting one clone running away and there's another clone he has to like shoot or whatever um and that that project really required you know had me learn how to like really kind of like understand you know splicing clips editing stuff and this was like the following summer so i think this was like 2013 mm. i was going into my eighth grade i think i remember 
I was going to eighth grade because I remember um having like middle school practice the next weekend or you know having fall practice for eighth grade football or whatever so you know that was you know that was the last home movie unfortunately I wasn't able to do much in high school I, I you know if I could go back I would have did more um you know films our short film productions in high school but you know it was one of those things where you know um uh, I got busy with school work uh, I didn't work in high school I just I mean work out for football mm -hmm. and sports but it wasn't until I got back to UNT where I was like uh grad I went to TCC first after graduating high school then UNT uh and finally was into film uh the film part of my uh intro or uh, whatever you call it like, like film intro yeah uh course at UNT mm -hmm. and that's when I um you know did another movie called it's actually on YouTube Donovan's Way this is the yeah. very first movie on a Little Brother Productions I know you said you're re-watching some of them mm -hmm. you, you I think I'm sure you've seen that one oh yeah plenty of times because Kale's oh, yeah, in there, so yeah. yeah I yeah I don't remember if he talked to me a lot or I came across it but um I remember watching that that was the first one I watched I think you guys released that during the pandemic I, I remember because yes so it was yeah. a 2020 film it actually yeah. got selected into i think a couple of film festivals yeah. but pretty cool that was one of them um, that. yeah one was uh one in louisiana mm -hmm. um it was i just was on zoom it was it was it was a cool thing like i interviewed like they interviewed me like it was a panel like me and another filmmaker we we're talking about our movies and you know the movie happened to take place during 2020 when yeah. there was like pandemic so obviously it was garnered to the whole theme of like isolation locked up so you know sometimes as filmmakers and storytellers you, you know a little tip for those who's you know looking to be a filmmaker a storyteller just you know pull i mean you know everybody wants to make that grand film or they want to make something that's artsy or something that's like big i mean just just film honestly man like yeah. you know pull from your own situation and uh you know you know experience like let's say maybe you know you're working at a job that you're kind of like feeling like it's a cycle you know make us maybe make a story of that you know or if you're going through a relationship maybe you know a breakup or something or whatever or something going on in the world right like the Diamond's way was filmed during the pandemic so i mean i had limited resources so i made this story about this kid who's kind of like quarantine locked up uh, i added a little sci-fi twist um or whatever to it to make it kind of like you know look like some type of sci-fi film really uh but you know just yeah as any filmmakers watching this listening to this you know you, you know pull from your own experience make stuff film stuff uh, a lot of filmmakers are you know when they're starting into it are you know they don't really like their uh, work in the beginning so they don't like to show it or you know keep going they get discouraged but you know i mean just keep going at it um just keep yeah just keep going at it and you know don't be afraid to fail you know just pull from your own experience You'll, you'll find a lot of like you know resources in that so that was my little tidbit <laughs> a little sidetrack but yeah Donovan's Way you know was it was a fun production filmed with Caleb I've been filming with Caleb for a while with the home movies like on Dart so you know there's the you know little brother production chemistry right there right <laughs> yeah so yeah Donovan's Way was the first movie and that's when a uh, little brother productions came back um after being kind of dormant for a while while I was in high school, not really using it, not filming stuff at all. So yeah, man, I mean, brought that back and yeah, you know, it's, it's three years later. That was in 2020. Now it's 2023. Mm -hmm. Met some amazing filmmakers, um, Conrad, George, so many other people along the way, like Conrad and George were the first ones I've met after Donovan's way filmed, uh, the girl of his dreams with them oh, yeah. uh, following. Cause I filmed Donovan's way. I think in like April, well, around April, it was for a class. So I had to finish it before a certain time. Hmm. And then in the summer, I was like, I got to get, you know, I want to get back into filming. So I met this guy, Conrad. He was in one of my film classes, one of my intro film classes. And then uh, the, my other friend I met, George, I met him at um, working at Walmart. So, <laughs> you know, we clicked and, you know, a, you know, I had a cast build around it. And, you know, Grover's Dreams was like the next big, kind of like launching pad for a little bit of reductions. And after that, it was like a domino. So we made movies, 
uh, after whereas we made Reverie or a one hour movie. I didn't direct. That was my oh, favorite. Reverie is indeed one of my favorites. I, oh, that's I awesome. really yeah. love Reverie. I remember watching it too as well. Like watching mm-hmm. a bit of it and then I stopped and I watched the channel after a while. I'm like, I'm going to rewatch every one of these and Reverie is like my favorite one. Yeah, oh, I, awesome. one of them, like, it speaks so well. Like, The Girl of Your Dreams speaks really well. I remember you was telling me about that. Um, Among Us was great, too. Oh, yeah, Among Us was, like, uh, all of us writing and directing yeah. together. And time. Reverie is, like, it was just amazing. The storyline of the plot, everything was just so great. Of And then how the ending was, like, the ending was just so good. I like how the girl was trying to go back with the guy, even though like she put him on a whole entire friend zone. <laughs> oh, like just friend zone, yeah. But okay, I, I do want to ask about Reverie though, because yeah. you're the part I I'm I'm kind of curious about. I mean, you don't have to answer this if you don't want to, you know. So oh, yeah, uh, when when the actors was on the set when they were smoking, uh, um, <laughs> I, I don't know what I guess I'll. I can say weed or marijuana, whatever got them high. Was it like a prop that you guys use? Because it... So it was, it was, um, okay. I mean, <laughs> it was just so the story, the script required. So the whole movie's about this kid named Ollie. And, you know, he, um, you know, takes part in, I mean, obviously, I don't know, like your whole target, like the audience, but I'll try to keep yes. it very family friendly, very general yeah, so like let's that. say you know he, he's a college kid and sometimes in college you know some students some you Especially know young nowadays, people, like high school yeah or yeah high players. school college right so ollie's is your typical high school kid um stoner for lack of a better word he has a there stoner group of friends so you know uh well you know it's times when he's down sad or whatever it's more of like a kind of like a i guess just another thing and um in the story right he he does take, you know, hit of a, it's called, you know, you know, just, I guess, yeah, it's just, it's a, it's a, it's a, a bong, right? So yeah. I hope I'm calling it the right thing, but yeah, it's a bong. And, um, you know, basically this kind of catapults him. Uh, you'll notice in a lot of our movies, a lot of characters go through like these kind of psychological trips. Oh, yeah. so I don't know what is up with our, I guess it's our niche. Cause like Grubber's dreams, you know, he, goes into another world when he sleeps and, and then reverie he takes part of marijuana and goes into another another world and kind of activates this um you know uh it's like a key unlocks his door that transport him to another world right another another reality so mm-hmm. and then um re, uh, i mean uh let's see uh nocturnal void is another one where you know dre is the main character and not to, i know we're going to talk about that later but Dre yeah. is this character who takes the sci-fi pill yeah who um it kind of transport him into um this alternate world right this different reality or different perspective uh perception of reality so it's interesting how uh i feel like reverie definitely was kind of like one of our well grover's dreams technically was one of the early ones but reverie was the one where i guess you could say like psychedelic <laughs> and stuff kind of like becoming as a tool of to show um, alternate worlds which you know it's just is for creative um expression or whatever or um just display i guess you know reverie happens to be a bong because you know it's one of those things in college with, you know drugs and stuff so right. uh obviously the movie i don't i wouldn't say the movie's a just a straight up just druggy induced film right i you know i think there's deeper meaning in reverie um it's just a tool that kind of like um is used to kind of like you know elevate the story or not really elevate, but kind of like carry it along and give it like, you know, moving parts. But really, I think Reverie is more of like this story about this kid who's just trying to find himself in college. And, you know, a lot of people could relate to that. When you go into college for the first time, you're just like, it's a whole new thing. You don't know what to do. You know, you don't know. You know, you have some people that you may remember from, you know, you may have a small group of friends or whatever. And Reverie happened to be like they were high school friends. But, you know, in reality, right, sometimes you meet some people in college, small group, but there's a bigger thing like you know what am I do career wise what am I do after school and it's like what you know trying to figure out what you're going to do so obviously you know there's drugs and reverie right these characters do that but the story isn't really about like you know saying oh yes drugs 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 you know um and same with you know the nocturnal voyage like the character does take you know these 
these pills that are kind of meant to be drugs or psychedelics, but really it's more about him, the story following this character who's just trying to find an escape in many ways. So this drug kind of like is a big part of the movie. It kind of um, catapults things, right? Gets things going and kind of unlocks something in him yeah. uh, in the story. But ultimately, like Dre is just trying to find some solution, some to some something to fill his kind of like void of like loneliness. And, you know, he looks in, you know, he does drugs and then he looks that for people, but never really getting the right answer. Right. And, you know, it's kind of something that's like this cycle that tears at him. So, you know, yeah, but to go back to Reverie, you know, yeah. So, you know, these characters in the script, right, this story, they do take part, take part of drugs, but, you know. I think the the story isn't really kind of like yeah meant to be like this super stoner druggy propaganda thing, right? I think it's right. deeper than that. It's more about these kids, and I feel like you know people that you know don't do drugs or people that do do drugs, or whatever, you know, can relate to it as just a story as zone. And you know, it, it was a fun production. I got to play an old man on the bench. I guess oh, yeah, it's called the credits. Yeah, <laughs> I was just holding a newspaper and. Uh, wearing this old sweater and got called old man so good times <laughs> but no i mean reverie was it was fun man it was it was one of those productions where a lot we met a lot of great people on there and you know made some awesome relationships and formed some awesome relationships got connected with people so you know you know reverie is one of those movies that i really like look back and you know really enjoyed that we were able to make or glad we were able to make because mm -hmm. it was at the time man it was a big it was a big thing that we've done it was like probably our most ambitious thing most ambitious thing at the time yeah. so being able to do that movie man was it was it was awesome seeing it we had a premiere for it and it was fun man just dressing up taking photos um eating popcorn and <laughs> you know watching it at a friend's apartment right so um and you can see bts stuff on the a little yeah. brother productions ig um because we you know we had we post all that stuff on there so like bts premieres and all that jazz. I know I just did a self plug, but <laughs> <laughs> and the bloopers too. Yeah. Don't forget about the bloopers. Blue, yeah, bloopers. There. Well, Reverie has bloopers, and like before the credits start. But um, mm. yeah. I mean, yeah, man. I mean, yeah, yeah. They did. They did. Yeah, yeah. yeah I remember now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was like a little kind of like character type thing. Yeah. Like it, before each name, like you know, before the lead actors, right? You see the little blooper reel of them on yeah. the actors. Uh, even George got one as the director, so you know. Mm. Uh, it, was, it was it was fun, man. It was it was a cool production. Nice. All right. Well, thank you for sharing us that info with uh, Reverie. Uh, hopefully, after this interview, I can uh, catch up with the other ones and uh, all that stuff. So, uh, speaking of self plug in, uh, we're gonna continue on with this here. Uh, so I know you mentioned in the beginning that you did the film with your brothers with the Star Wars and all. And uh, as I have mentioned in the beginning of this video that one of your brothers is in a music group, as some may or may not know them as, Pemerary Duo, and in one of their songs that they released on their album, uh, Press Start, is uh, their song called Dance Like Nobody's Watching, or mm -hmm. DLNW, two of your cast, uh, or yeah, your cast members from your film actually appeared in the uh, film, and I think, one of the songs uh one of their songs was in your films if i'm not mistaken so yeah um dance like nobody's watching is done by penner and doing my older brother alphonse wilson and his friend from high school uh jake rodriguez they formed this band right um i believe it was in 2019 is when they started kind of like doing concerts and performing making music uh they may have formed together in 2018 I'm um, just trying to remember, but somewhere in that 2018, 2019 window is when they developed Panoramic Duo, Panoramic Duo. And, you know, as musicians, right, they're going to want to do music videos. So uh, I think they did a couple of covers, like I think they did a Blinding Lights cover and um, they did, um, you know, these these uh, music videos of that nature. But eventually they're going to want to do like a kind of like a production of one of their own songs, right? Or um, an actual like moving music video, like something that's like, has you know a bigger production not you know big production but like some production assets to it yeah so like camera maybe people right um and that's when you know i was able to do uh our film um dance like nobody's watching for them um so you know that was a blessing it's always a blessing to have the opportunity to improve and learn about you know learn more about filming and different you know 
uh, I guess you could say medium of film. So music videos, uh, um, you know, it's a different type of uh, storytelling, right? You got fixed amount of time, unless you're, you know, I mean, there's music, mu like musicians like Michael Jackson who would have like thriller as a film and then a music yeah. video, right? Right. But, um, you know, anyway, just doing music videos, it's, it's different, right? So, right. you know, you got to incorporate music and, you know, uh, with and as well as storytelling in a way. So uh, this dance like nobody's watching is really straightforward. So I just um, really these two people meeting up are these two people who eventually meet up um, uh, and dance through, throughout the city as they meet up um, played. So that's Conrad, um, who was in Reverie. He, um, I mean, they don't really have names, but he plays kind of like the lead guy, the first guy you see. And then um, uh, Megan, um, Megan Mitchell, she is um, plays the girl um, who meets up with him. So uh, she was in Reverie as well. She plays uh, Heather. So um, Conrad played the stranger and pretty much plays a lot of lead characters in my movies. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> he knows that a lot. Um, he's had a lot. He had to play full. So, um, yeah, these two people they worked with, you know, they were in Reverie. So at the time, got him in these movies not movie, I mean music video, um, and, you know, they were able to do that, so it was a cool process to be able to do, cool, you know, when you film, it's always good to try to, like, learn something, so it was my first time using a gimbal, really, um, trying to, like, you know, work with the rhythm and the flow, and, you know, that the, the camera we used was uh, a camera for, from George that we used for Reverie, actually, so being able to work with that camera, um, also use that camera in Marlowe, so another movie that I did, um the later that year 2022 um marlo um so it was cool and you know panoramic duo they did that and as well as with them their music videos have been evolving too so you know dance like nobody's watching um sad summer was another one i filmed oh. and yeah i filmed that but drown was the one i didn't film i kind yeah. of like i don't know i guess you would say hmm it's i, I don't know my I, the, the role I had for Drown is kind of tricky because I didn't film it, but I kind of helped assemble the team for it. Like the cameraman is a guy named James Kang, who's, uh, you know, been DPing a couple of our last productions, um, Butterflies and the Nocturnal Voyage, as some to mention, as well as um, uh, he also DP'd uh, Until Next Time, which is a, a movie that released back in September. Yeah. For Nocturnal Voyage, the Nocturnal Voyage. So he's been DPing for us for a while, and he's also DPing this uh, a film that hasn't released yet. That's mm. still in product. That's still in post production called uh, Tomorrow. That's directed by Conrad Conrad Sneed. So Conrad does a little bit of acting, directing, producing, writing. So he he's trying to pull out his Sylvester Stallone or something, <laughs> <laughs> but um, something like that. But uh, or Michael B. Jordan. But um, yeah, man, you know, did those music videos for my older brother Fonz Panoramic Duo. Um, have been a part of them. I think that right now they only have like three kind of official music videos, and and uh, we did incorporate "Dance Like Nobody's Watching" and "Drown" in "Butterflies." Mm. Um, you you can hear "Dance Like Nobody's Watching" in uh one of the date scenes. Um, I believe it's uh the second date. Yeah, when they're with Madeline, who plays um, who plays oh well, why am I going blank? Um. Kate, um, I don't know why I went Blake. Uh, yeah, so Kate is uh, so Conrad plays in that movie. Uh, Butterflies follows this young man. It's kind of like a spin on sci-fi, mm -hmm. kind of like a spy-fi spin on dating, online dating, where it's like, it's very inspired from you know, I guess you could say like, uh, movies, the movie Her, uh, Black Black Mirror from Netflix, and you know, kind of like this take on dating as far as like having to have a hundred dates. And then that 101 date being the perfect match after a series of you going on these dates. And, you know, they can either go good or they go a little bad or they can go in between or they yeah. go sad or whatever, right? Right. So, you know, uh, Michael meets this girl um, on one of his dates named Elena, who is played by Rochelle May. Um, you know, just a, just a bubble of sunlight, just a bubble of energy Rochelle is. So, you know, it's always, you know, meeting her. I, I mean, I think I actually... I haven't met her in person. I mean, I, before Butterflies, I didn't meet her in person. I just was following her on social media and we were following each other, whatever. Mm -hmm. And, you know, um, there was finally this opportunity in Butterflies to have a character play Elena. 
And, you know, I want someone that's, you know, um, you know, kind of, you know, positive, bubbly, right? And, you know, going through the, the people I knew that could play the character, I was like, you know, I haven't worked with this girl before, uh, her, you know, Rochelle at the time, but I was like, you know what, this, this may be the right person. And, you know, sure enough, she, she did an amazing performance as Elena. I mean, I feel like Elena is, you know, Elena because of her rights. I feel like she brought the character to, to life and, um, you know, grateful to have her on the roster and uh, as a friend and a colleague. So, you yeah. know, shout out to Rochelle. <laughs> but, um, yeah, Conrad, of course, I was just like, all right, here's another one. <laughs> another role for you i'm just i mean at this point you know we've been working together so long i'm pretty much you know um i always i always uh as a like when i was getting into film i always thought it was cool to see directors like have that director and actor duo like combo like uh quinn tarantino and yeah. samuel jackson um there's so many others man i mean um for a minute, Christopher Nolan kind of was doing a lot of movies with, uh, well, I don't know. He uses the same actors. Mm. Uh, I mean, name for name, I'm trying to think, but yeah. I don't know. But I mean, right at, at the moment, I don't know. But um, yeah, it, it, you you know, like, uh, I, I'm just using recent examples, like Spike Lee and Denzel Washington. They have done multiple movies together. Or even Michael B. Jordan and uh, Ryan Coogler, you know, Creed, mm. um, Black Panther. Yeah, and I think they got another movie coming out together. Uh, Fruitvale Station is another one I released too. Uh, but they, you know, they did these movies together, and I'm like, you know, these are more recent examples. But yeah, you know, yeah. when I was younger, there was examples as well. I was like, it's cool to see directors have that kind of like actor and director duo where they do different films together, different stories. So you know, Matt Conrad and you know, The Girl of His Dreams. It was pretty much almost like, boom, you did this. We're gonna be rock. We're gonna, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna do multiple films. I guess now. <laughs> uh, I did Hurt. Did Restless. I mean, Among Us, technically, we all directed, but Among yeah. Us, um, man, uh, I said I said The Girl of His Dreams, but, um, I, you know, obviously, that's the first one, but Butterflies and Nocturnal Voyage, so multiple films of me and him, kind of like uh, me as a director and him as a, you know, uh, actor, but yeah, man, I mean, I kind of went on a sidetrack, I kind of branched off, but yeah, <laughs> we did use, a, so Kenner and McDougal, that was the first uh, movie they scored, um, and, you know, those, the music videos that it's funny, like two of the music videos that's out right now from them have, are in the Butterfly song and Drown, sure enough, has the girl who plays Elena, Rochelle, in there. So, you know, as well as the same cinematographer. So it's kind of cool. It's like a unofficial Butterfly song. <laughs> but, right, you know, right. you know, it's it's Drown and, you know, amazing track for those who haven't heard it. They also have Waves out now, which is kind of like, you know, a nice, nice, it, you know, it came out in the summer around yeah. the summertime so it was you know nice summer track you can still play like their exactly. music is amazing you can play it any time of the day month mm -hmm. whatever family friendly right Fam you can play at family parties family outings cookouts any song any song and and, and any song. Now, it's just like amazing it just all uh they all hit different in a way and just great yeah um i was also trying to thought there i was listening it oh right so I know you're saying um, the short films, the ones that are not like the hour long type films. I know like Reverie is like an hour long. Mm -hmm. Girl of His Dreams is like 50 something minutes, I think. I don't remember. The Girl of His Dreams. Uh, no, that was about 26 minutes. It does feel long because there's a lot going on. Yeah. Um, my second longest movie probably would be, well, I think Nocturnal Voyage. Maybe my longest movie right now. Mm -hmm. um, I think. Uh, Marlo maybe my long like either Marlo or Nocturnal Voyage maybe my longer movies that's you know on YouTube right now because mm. I mm -hmm. Nocturnal I think Nocturnal is about thirty four minutes mm -hmm. correct while the girl like Marlo is I think maybe like thirty five minutes I could be wrong but right. I think Marlo is a little longer um and there's a lot going on in that movie with you know um that one is actually very i think that's probably my only movie i've done on my on the youtube channel where i don't think conrad is in at all like wow. every other movie i've done conrad has been in so it's kind of funny how like yeah it just and it, you know marlo's a very story that's kind of like i kind of went outside my comfort zone and you know wanted to try something new uh tell this kind of like coming of age story um about a you know a young a young girl who's trying to like meet her mom so you yeah. know, it was, it was something, it was very, it was a, it was a, you know, taking a risk and, and trying to like go outside the norm. And, you know, as a storyteller and filmmaker, you could 
talk to many other filmmakers, storytellers, you know, you don't want to be like some, as a storyteller, you kind of want to like, usually want to try, you know, try new things and, you know, right. see what works, what doesn't work. And sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't, but um, at least you try, you know, uh, I think that's what a lot of filmmakers, they are afraid to try and they do try and they may not like the final product and they never show anything to anyone. So, yeah. I mean, you know, I think, you know, with productions and stuff, like, as a filmmaker, you should try different, you know, genres so like mystery, rom com, suspense, or you know, coming of age, psychological thrillers. Uh, I haven't tried horror, so I may have to, you know, try a horror type short, kind of like some Jordan Peele stuff. Yeah, <laughs> but you know, I, that's one genre I haven't really explored. I, I do a lot of like psychological type stories, so right. that's kind of like my, you know. Ah, uh, fall back. <laughs> you know, when in doubt, just put a little psychological thrill in there. Yeah. But um, I think uh, I, I haven't done the horror and comedy, so those are two I haven't really like explored as far as directing wise. And I feel like you know those are two genres I think um, you know, I would like to explore right as a mm-hmm. you know filmmaker. So you know, it's good right now to do short films to get practice to see what works with them, and you know, as you grow right you use these tools resources and people you meet not use people but you know use these resources and make these relationships with people and build something with them right so um yeah man i mean you know it's it's, it's just it's just taking a step at a time right like you make a film and you just gotta move on and get ready for the next and try to make make it better than the last right 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 exactly exactly i know you got reference michael jackson a lot you know, with his short films, turn to music videos, like with Driller, the growing up storyline. And uh, of course, you got Bad, which, of course, he played the role of some uh, high schooler dude. Yeah, kind of yeah. like this. I think if I'm correct, like, a, obviously, bad boy, right? Yeah, hang out with the, the I think the thugs and stuff. And I know mm-hmm. Beat It, for mm-hmm. example, which I love Beat It so much because the storyline behind that one was uh, how he was managed to get the blood and the crypts together in this one music video and have the police surround surrounding them to make sure nothing happened. Um uh, mm-hmm. of course you had um the way you make me feel too. Yeah. His short film <laughs> dancing dancing mm-hmm. down the street. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Hey, yeah, you know, with Michael, Michael did uh, a lot of things, you know. Oh yeah. He I mean, he's a, he's short a film. Definitely... Like, it's like you can just know that it's gonna be a music video. Well, having a perfect short film in first before Mm -hmm. they incorporate with it, which, you know, like you were saying, that's kind of like something, you know, a lot of people should really look into instead of like jumping straight into the music video, have a little short film to incorporate, make it like a movie. Exactly, man. I mean, it's stories like human beings. I feel like since the beginning of uh, time, you know, stories is like how we learn, how we kind of like, you know, um, understand things. Right. So um, metaphors, parables. Right um you know it just it's just one of those things that human beings kind of i guess use as a tool right storytelling and um just the way to understand things you know Mm -hmm. and you it's a very important tool like you could convey so many messages you could inspire you can uh, inform you could educate you could just you can enlighten you can make someone laugh you can make someone cry you know it's just like it's just amazing what film could do with just these it could be based off true stories or it could be made up, right? Like, right. you know, Pixar, I mean, Pixar in their heyday, I mean, oh, they'll do that. I'm not going to, sh- I mean, Pixar still has some good movies here and there, but um, like the early Pixar. <laughs> the early like Pixar, the early there Pixar. you go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Early yeah. Pixar, there you go. Toy Story, Buzz Light. Toy Story, Buzz, Buzz Light. Life, uh, uh, freaking just now, Incredibles, man. Yeah. Right? I just now recently, uh, I mean, by the time I'm recording this interview, the day of recording this, they just announced it, Inside Out 2 is... Coming yeah to, coming out i like the first one i like the first inside out inside out too i'm kind of like i never seen like inside out i'm not into before. like the disney pixar's yeah. films much i know there's a toy story yeah. 5 that's coming out yeah yeah i heard about that yeah and you know like you said like the early days of pixar's pixar's actually they you know their stories were just great in the bloopers back yeah. then. like the and they have bloopers like toy the story blo- 2 mm-hmm. has some of the greatest bloopers of all time i feel like like Toy Story 2, as well as Rush Hour. I think those yeah. two films, Rush Hour, uh, the Rush Hour franchise and Toy Story. I'll say Rush Hour 1 and Toy Story 2 bloopers may be the, some of the best bloopers ever made in like the history of cinema. 
maybe. Like, I, I feel like they're, like, top three. I don't know. And that's my opinion. I just feel like they set the they set the standard of, like, how bloopers should be. Like, Rush Hour, you got Chris Tucker, comedian, and you got Jackie Chan. And these two were just... The greatest duo oh. of all time. Yeah, you know, it's like, it's like you couldn't go wrong with them. It was just like, like Rush Hour like one was fourth one. I yeah, they've been saying that for a long time. So I'm just, well, I'm just waiting to see. You know, the actor strike is already over too, and it is the actor strike did end yesterday. I've been seeing that, so yeah. like we may get like, you know, they Lord. may pick up Stranger Things. You know, a lot of a lot of these yeah, things Stranger have been on Things, ice. Bel Air on Peacock, like everything is possible. All yeah. the filming and stuff that been on postponed for about like a year now it's like now no man it, it, it was crazy man so i saw that on social media and you know you know because you, you're like thinking like you know oh man like this, you know this you know it's, it's serious matter right so you you know you hoping it gets taken care of so because you know it's like a, a area that you you know it's, it's you know filmmaking ultimately like there's a business side to it like granted you know creativity and stuff but you all right. you know we gotta take care of business too so right. I'm glad, you know i'm glad things got taken care of um mm -hmm. But you know, you know, should should result into, I guess, an avalanche. I mean, I mean, I feel like we've been getting a lot of movies this year too. Oh yeah. Um, like Barbie Oppenheimer, mm -hmm. uh, Five Nights at Freddy just came out. Oh yeah, uh, I was just uh just recently finished watching it a second time on Peacock. On Peacock, yeah, man, yeah. yeah I, I haven't finished the whole thing, uh, but I know it came out on Peacock. Yeah. So. Um, I didn't realize yeah, I'm like, after, you know, I didn't, really, I didn't mean to cut you off, but I didn't realize oh, it no. after, like, I was watching the behind the scenes on YouTube the other day, and I realized it, and it, it, it's amazing to me, at least, because I know, like, how some of the films were filmed in Louisiana, like, uh, oh. Will Smith film was filmed in Louisiana years ago, it's another one that they did, and I found out, through, like, these YouTubers, that the restaurant scenes, what they made was filmed actually in New Orleans, what? So you yeah. talking about the restaurant in Five Nights at Freddy? Mm-hmm. And uh, another yeah. too, like this Sparky Diner place was filmed in New Orleans. I was like, what? That's crazy. I didn't realize yeah. that. But no, it's like it's not every day people are gonna go to Hollywood and go to the studio stages and like yeah. film. I mean, you can go anywhere to go film. You can go to Atlanta, exactly. and film uh something, and then you can just go to Nebraska and go film something. And mm -hmm. I was all thinking like, okay, this is just like some studio stuff that they did and everything else but no they went all the way to new orleans and i'm like wow that's just crazy like this whole place was just filmed there and i remember when finance of freddy was blowing up too it was like people were saying there's a restaurant in new orleans and now it's like now um i don't know if fans are like gonna go down to find the oh. structure <laughs> in new orleans especially around mardi gras yeah, man. Probably. But uh, <laughs> there's a restaurant, little like building in uh, California, but it's not like officially open, but they just did it for the movie and all. And ah, I believe yeah. it's still there. But it's cool to see that, you know, other places they can like go film at. And, you know, just uh, plug that in with Finance and Freddy's. This was filmed in uh, Louisiana. And that's it's cool. I think every, uh, the whole movie was filmed in Louisiana, actually, from what that's I. That's dope, man. I'm, I mean, the South, like you were saying, like Atlanta, New Orleans, like, you know, these places, like, you know, it's becoming, like, the quote-unquote new Hollywood, or Hollywood of the South, like, there's yeah. so many productions, like, shows being being filmed out there, and um, they just, you know, I, I don't know all of them on top of my head, but that, that right. was really insightful, you saying Five Nights at Freddy. I, I wouldn't have guessed they would have filmed in New Orleans. I would have thought, like, some studio yeah. in the hills yeah. or something in California or Bel Air or something, right? right? I, if I, you know, if it was asked, I wouldn't say New Orleans, but that's cool. I mean, I feel like New Orleans just has a lot of like you know, for filmmakers I know those bigger productions, it, it's it may be expensive to film out in California, so it you know these lands in the south is just more cheaper to use and more accessible, so it's just like why not film here and you know it's gonna bring money to the you know the city as well, so it's just like it's like a win win situation. So I feel like you know Atlanta, New Orleans, and you know more places you know just of the south may just get the new I mean. I know people call it the new Hollywood South, but yeah. it's get more attack, uh, more attraction. So it's just like cool. And now people are gonna probably gonna visit that restaurant you mentioned probably. just because, you know, like oh, Five Nights at Freddy was coming there. Yeah, if they if they know the location offhand, which hoping they do because I would love to go with buddy of mine and like just go see it. Hopefully they do yeah. like, construction it down because I know when it comes to, like certain places, some people like burn stuff down or ah oh, man, yeah, or try to like freaking pawn in there yeah. two shows in the uk was like that because of property and stuff and i get why they did it too but at the same time fans are willing to see uh what was there and where everything was at 
exactly. Like I you know the in the the show the break uh break what's it Breaking Bad like it was filmed in New Mexico I believe yeah New Mexico and you know they actually use houses right like people live in so people will go buy those houses and you know take photos and take pictures and you know it's just like it is impressive when people are passionate about something they'll find the location like they'll find the places it's filmed and it's cool I I mean I'll be like it, I would it'd be cool to go to the see where they you know the quote unquote, the quote unquote Heisenberg house right in the break I don't know if you watch Breaking Bad but mm -hmm. in the show you know they have these houses they have the these locations right and even movies like y'all see like um I know in the past I've seen you know, Boys in the Hood like um people drive to the location where they filmed the scenes in Boys in the Hood from the early 90s by John Singleton and you know it's cool to see like how these places look like this movie Boys in the Hood came out in 1991 And I think I saw a video of the guy checking out the locations like he filmed in like 20 years later or maybe mm. in 2022. So maybe 20 years later, a little bit more. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just cool, like seeing how, you know, these places look now, like they look different. Right. But, right. you know, at one point they were um, a big set of a very, you know, big film. So um, that turned out to be, you know, very influential. So yeah i mean it, it's cool man just locations filming and you know there's so much of filmmaking like business side there's entertainment side there's that you know the fan side and the, you know there's so much in film like it's just it's like this cake man it's like a huge cake it's just so many layers of what's you know what's in it so it's just it just you know it's just awesome man right 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 indeed uh speaking of which of filmmaking i know you guys now are uh taking a hiatus i think or y'all in pre-production But what is uh hmm? so actually it's kind of weird <laughs> we're so we're we released nocturnal voyage the nocturnal voyage um so that movie we kind of have some movies slated actually so this may be a early kind of like you know early exclusive um what's the uh, info i guess you could say <laughs> yeah. um but yeah so we have the nocturnal voyage uh released right now and you know we released uh until next time two months prior on two months prior uh we've probably released the behind the scenes um video for the nocturnal voyage in the following week um working on that but we do have a new movie called albatross that's coming out probably in december i have to talk to george that's his film that he directed and mm -hmm. you know we produced you know we you know uh i guess work together is through the alb um name so it's you know a collaboration project so a lot of people worked on that um i have to talk to george about you know the state of that project but you know um i'm thinking uh i think we kind of talked about re releasing it around christmas maybe mm -hmm. but if he still you know it's not set in stone because he may want to release it later um if he still needs to work on it or has things he want to do with it so um don't quote it yet but i mean the movie yeah. may we may get another you may get another uh lb movie in december um late December maybe early January in that window maybe early to mid January so we kind of have this movie in post production as well Albatross it follows a uh, sure enough another character going on a um psychological trip kind of uh he doesn't really take drugs he takes it's more of a uh, helmet that induces um to put him in a state and to travel in his own memories his own mind so he you mm. know he gets in this new state so another sci-fi film about a character going uh into another perception of reality so um it's i don't know i mean i guess that's our that's our thing man <laughs> even tomorrow like that's a movie about this character that yeah. um who goes into another kind of like perceived reality or uh another world right another yeah another perception of reality in the story as far as the story goes so i don't know man i guess our i guess the girl of his dreams kind of <laughs> put a freaking road or whatever or i guess I don't know something uh psychological stories is what's a lot of our movies but you know i mean they tend to you know i think uh people mess with them so if not broke don't fix it but right. <laughs> yeah so albatross should be the next upcoming movie that's in post-production um tomorrow is still in post-production that one may not be released till later in the spring of next year uh those are our two upcoming movies uh ALB release and we're working on a very new project where I actually play a detective in. Oh yeah. Um so I'm acting and it's called Crumbling Castle. So this is a new movie. 
Um, it, it, we post about it on social media, so it's not like some big bombshell news. But um, I play a character named uh, Detective McKenzie, or Detective Mac. So I'm a detective in there, and we're trying to figure out um, a classic case, a, a classic who done it. Yeah, uh, a murder to um, I guess you could say, uh, kind of patriarch figure. Mm-hmm. I would say in the story, um, yeah. named Howard. Mm-hmm. Um, very wealthy, rich guy. So, as I guess, as you could guess, right? Everybody may want a chunk of his money, or yeah. you know, people may want to get to the bottom of his murder. So, uh, I play a character named Detective McKenzie, who kind of comes to the who who uh, uh, enters the scene with um, another detective named uh, Detective Porter, um, and he's the head detective. I'm like his kind of like you know, he's like the seasoned veteran, right? And I'm kind of yeah. like this uh not i guess you could say kind of like this guy trying to like make a name for myself so the new guy very kind of like opposites he's more serious kind of more stern i'm kind of more like you know Mm -hmm. uh what's the word for it just like kind of like cool cat type vibe or whatever laid back kind of think will Mm -hmm. smith vibes what i was told (laughs) on that right so great um it was fun man and that was directed by my friend george george torres so it's kind of funny how things have like blossomed from you know him just, you know, joining to film uh on the Girl of His Dreams. And now, you know, obviously he directed before, but now it's him directing me, which is kind of like, you know, it's 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 different, man. But it, um Bryson, another friend who jumped on who joined us, um, he edited Reverie. So this is his first kind of like writing debut. Um and you know, it's been a fun process, man. it's it's uh filmed on the Alexa camera. Um and it, dude, it looks, it looks cinematic. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, I don't know exact name of the camera. I believe it's under the Alexa branch. Uh, I have to, I would have to check. But dude, that camera is, that thing is huge. It's like, almost like this big, yeah. right? And it's like, it's like a cinema camera, bro. It's just like, it's cinema. <laughs> I don't know how to call it, but yeah. um, you know, we, uh, I seen stills from it, and like, you know with it with a rec 709 color grade or whatever yeah and it looks good it looks it looks i'm i'm you know i'm looking forward to the movie and when it's finished um we're still filming that so mm-hmm. that's kind of like what's been going on yeah. with alb right now so we've been you know filming that we're almost done we're i think we're supposed i think we're going to wrap principal on this upcoming well at the time of this recording yeah um um the this following weekend we're supposed to wrap uh, this upcoming weekend so you know looking forward to that and just you know i met some awesome people through it like i feel like you know this production had a really great team aboard um everyone was you know invested on it that was a part of the project and you know it's, it's always refreshing to have that like you know um team like that someone you know people that's down to like put the work in and you know make the project as best as it can be and you know we have familiar faces we have uh priscilla luces who plays um uh in a lot of our movies among us uh you know butterflies elixir we also have rochelle in there who was in um butterflies right um a lot of familiar faces ashley santa maria she's in you know she's like an og from reverie day so <laughs> she's probably one of our older ogs as well as tristan Chumula. uh um who else we got we got we got we got some new faces man and you know tristan ashley those are our ogs um i guess you could say i'm kind of og in there i'm yeah. i'm in there i've been cameo in a lot of these movies but this is my first thing and brandon um he also who playing the lead is you know um uh, i guess og as well because he was in river so yeah we have a great ensemble of a uh, great cast and newer faces that's newer to our scenes uh newer to our movie um one of the i know um yeah i mean just every, you know everybody's on board just kind of like making each other better and right. you know it's it's one of those things where it's just like awesome it's awesome to see it's refreshing so mm-hmm. i feel like this could be kind of like a reverie type film kind of not like stoner but like i'm just yeah. saying like as far as like it being a big production maybe an hour long um um yeah but at least it'll, it'll look like a actual like it'll look like a movie for real though so mm. no i'm i'm glad to have everyone on board um and yeah i mean yeah the crumbling castle 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> Indeed. Can't but, wait for that. Yeah. Well, it looks like we're all out of time for now, folks. Thank you, Mayo, for joining on in and asking all these uh questions or answering all the questions and stuff. See, we got a tangent here and there, but that's pretty fun. Yeah, yeah, it was awesome. I mean, yeah, man. I mean, thank you for having me. It was awesome. Talk movies, talk about ALB, and you know, yeah, yeah man. I mean, yeah, like Nocturnal Voyage. The Nocturnal Voyage is out, everybody. So that's our latest movie. I know I was mentioning all these upcoming movies, but Nocturnal Voyage is out, available now to watch on YouTube. So feel free to watch that. Mm-hmm. You want to check out Mayo? You can check out on the social media down below, along with ALB. Thanks again, man, for joining on in for a second time. And, uh, you know, we should see you again each other soon whenever I'm back down in Texas. All right, man. Yeah, thank you for having me. It was a pleasure. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. All right, y'all. You can subscribe to his channel, AOB. Link in the description below. Make sure to subscribe to our channel, Chucky's Talk Show, The Great All American Pizza Podcast. If you want to see someone else be interviewed onto the show, let me know in the comments below and we can work something out. Until then, we'll see you all in the next video.